The film opens with a young couple kissing in a car on the outskirts of the small town of Cherry Falls. The guy tries to seduce the girl to have love, but she rejects him, as she is not yet ready to say goodbye to her virginity. They are unaware that another car is parked nearby with a person watching them. A car approaches from behind and turns on the headlights, causing the couple to be blinded and unable to see who is driving. Rob decides to come closer, when suddenly an unknown person opens the door and hits him on the head. Jumping out of the car, a man with a knife attacks the guy and inflicts several blows. The frightened girl screams in horror and closes the doors, hoping that this can save her. A minute later, an injured Rob crawls up to the car and asks his lover to open the door. As soon as she does this, an unknown person takes the guy's life and attacks the girl. She manages to jump out, but the man catches up with the schoolgirl at the tree and threatens with a knife. At the same time, another couple of lovers are kissing in a car near the girl's house. Sheriff's daughter Jody and her boyfriend Kenny enjoy each other, but at the most crucial moment, the girl rejects the guy as she is not yet ready for him to become her first man. A car is approaching them from behind, driven by Marge, Jody's mother. She asks her daughter to hurry, as the father might be angry because of their lateness. Kenny has been waiting for a year and insists on having enjoy, but Jody refuses and goes home, which leads to their breakup. Upon returning home, the girl heads to her bedroom and comes to her father, who controls every step of the schoolgirl. He is unhappy with her being late and punishes her by forbidding her to go out for a walk next weekend. At four o'clock where the girl wakes up from the fact that someone called her father and called her to work. In the morning, the sheriff arrives at the crime scene and sees the lifeless body of a guy and his girlfriend nailed to a tree. This shocks Brent, because in their town, there have never been person capable of something like this. Meanwhile, Jody rushes to school and learns from a journalist classmate that two students lost their lives that night. A terrible crime plunged into mourning not only schoolchildren, but also residents of the town. Director Tom Siddler announced a memorial day and canceled classes so that classmates could remember the deceased with a kind word. Teacher Mr. Leonard Marliston meets with the students to discuss what happened. Someone sympathizes, others are shocked because of what happened, but there are those who joke about the current situation. The sheriff arrives at the school and meets with the principal, with whom he once studied in the same class. He thinks he needs to talk to the kids about what happened and heads to Jody's class. Later, the students go to the cafeteria, where they discuss relationships and the difficulties that arise in them. Someone is secretly in love with a classmate, while others become victims of gossip on the basis of which conflicts arise. Meanwhile, the killer continues to prepare for the next attack and sharpens knives. In the evening, the parents of one of the schoolgirls go to a party. Hearing the doorbell ring, trusting Annette opens it and comes face to face with the criminal. He hits the girl on the head with a door until she loses consciousness. Closer to the night, the parents return home and see the lifeless body of their daughter nailed to the ceiling chandelier. The sheriff is training his daughter in fighting techniques, when suddenly he gets a call and is informed about a new crime. FBI agents are involved in the case as a criminal is operating in the city. At the morgue, Brent speaks with a pathologist and learns that the word virgin is carved into the victim's inner thighs. Presumably, the man chooses with extreme precision whom to kill, and all the virgins of Cherry Falls are in danger. Upon returning home, the sheriff communicates with his daughter and learns that she also had no experience in bed. In the morning, the girl meets with the teacher when she suddenly notices someone's presence. They try to figure out who was following them, but they can't find anyone. Meanwhile, the sheriff gathers the schoolchildren's parents in the gym to discuss the situation. He reports that the victims of the criminal are virgins. The parents tease each other as some have nothing to fear, causing the meeting to escalate into a brawl. 
Timmy and Jody overhear the sheriff's conversation with his parents. The journalist asks the girl for a phone to call the editorial office and publish a sensation. At some point, he leaves and Jody goes in search of a classmate. She soon hears her phone ringing and finds Timmy's lifeless body in the closet. The frightened girl tries to escape and comes face to face with the criminal. Trying to fight off the unknown with a knife, Jody runs away and hides in the biology room, using everything that comes to hand for protection. Having stunned him, she escapes and meets her father. The next morning, Jody draws up an identikit, and it turns out that the criminal is a woman. At the same time, a guy appears in the station who is ready to take the blame, but the police understand that he has just lost his mind and is trying to draw attention to himself. The sheriff goes to his office and calls Tom, reminding him of the events that took place 27 years ago. Jody tries to learn her father's secrets, and eavesdrops on his conversation with the director after hearing the name, Laurel Sherman. Soon, the girl's mother and her best friend, Sandy, arrive at the station. The father invites his daughter to go home but it is easier for her to be among her classmates, so Jody goes to school. Here she is greeted as a hero, because the girl managed to fight off the criminal who attacked her. Kenny is also impressed by Jody's courage and asks to be forgiven for everything that was said before. The guy sincerely loves her and offers to return the relationship in order to make each other happy. Jody also learns from Sandy that the high school students decided to have a party where they could lose their virginity so that the criminal excluded them from the list of potential victims. Kenny invites Jody to the party, and she promises to think about it, hinting that she will agree to have love. Realizing what a responsible evening awaits them, the girls gather on the site to listen to a lecture from the only experienced classmate. She tells how to behave and whether it is necessary to protect yourself, avoiding problems and pregnancy. Guys do not bother with this because they are grateful to the criminal, because now girls are ready for anything to lose their main thing. Journalists also learned about what is happening at the school and created a news story based on this. Tom is furious and announces over the speakerphone that there will be severe punishment for attending the party. This does not frighten schoolchildren at all, because it is better to be expelled than to lose your life at the hands of a criminal. Upon returning home, Jody communicates with her mother and tries to find out who Laurel Sherman is and what happened to her 27 years ago. Marge says nothing, so the girl runs away and heads to the library. She is looking through old newspapers looking for some information and finds a couple of articles about Laurel. At that moment, she hears that someone is following her and grabs the figurine in self-defense. Faced with her mother in the hallway, Jody calms down and asks her to still tell about what happened. Marge confesses and tells that 27 years ago, Laurel was taken by, by four drunk graduates. They were the children of wealthy and powerful parents and also glorified the football team, so their guilt was not proven. The police did not press charges as there was not enough evidence and Laurel was not sober. Two of these guys left the city forever, the third became the principal of the school, and the last is Jody's father. Mother believes that she has nothing to worry about, since Brent was a passive participant in what was happening and did not use Laurel, unlike his comrades. Meanwhile, the sheriff goes to another city and finds a house that belongs to Laurel Sherman. Once inside a dilapidated building, the man descends into the basement and sees that the room looks more like a torture chamber, full of chains and other strange things. Here he finds a frightening baby doll and realizes that the house is empty. Returning to the car, the sheriff does not realize that someone was in the house and was watching him all this time. Deputy Mina radios him and tells him that Tom wants to meet and discuss something important. The rebellious nature prevails over the right upbringing and Jody goes to Kenny. The girl is ready to everything and asks the guy not to hesitate, but he understands that all this is just to annoy her parents. Kenny does not accept such a generous gift from the girl, 
as he wants their feelings and desires to be sincere. In addition, it was he who followed Jodi at school and saw how warmly she treats the teacher. Remembering Leonardo, the girl quarrels with her lover and hurriedly runs away. Kenny demands to stop or their relationship will end, but Jodi ignores him. In the evening, Brent hurries to school and finds Tom's lifeless body in the principal's office. Here, an unknown person attacks him and hits the sheriff on the head. Meanwhile, schoolchildren gather at a party. The police protect teenagers, but do not interfere in their affairs, as they do not do anything illegal. At a party, even nerds have a chance to seduce a beauty, because girls are ready to have love with anyone, just to become a woman and cross themselves off the list of a criminal. Kenny also comes here, who falls into the arms of one of the girls. At some point, he realizes that he only wants Jody and leaves to look for her. At the same time, the girl comes home to her teacher and meets him on the threshold with a heavy chest. Jody helps Leonardo drag him into the house and down to the basement. At some point, she wonders what is hidden in the chest, and the teacher replies that her father is there, and maybe his. Skeptical of Leonardo's words, Jody goes downstairs opens the chest and sees her father, covered in blood, lying unconscious. At this moment, the teacher throws off the mask of a good-natured intellectual and, revealing his essence as a criminal, hits the girl in the face, causing her to lose consciousness. A little later, Jody wakes up and realizes that she is tied to a chair a couple of meters from her father. Leonardo puts on makeup and puts on a wig as a result of which it becomes clear that he is the only criminal that is in the city, and the man did not use the image of his mother in order to confuse his tracks. He is sick in the head and finds comfort in Laurel's face. By changing his appearance, the teacher forces Brent to tell about everything that happened 27 years ago. The guys were in a hurry to the party and met Laurel near the broken car. She was a beautiful girl, and the drunk schoolchildren couldn't resist. Brent was sick and sick as the three friends took turns taking advantage of girl. The guy did not want to take part in this, but classmates literally put him on. The result of all this was Leonardo, the son of Brent, who took the lives of teenagers in order to punish parents who were mired in lies and vices. Trying to punish the sheriff as well. The man tries to leave scars on Jody's body, but Kenny comes to his house, looking for the girl. Leonardo reacts aggressively to the guy and orders him to leave, but he understands that Jody is in his house, as the girl's bike is nearby. After hitting the teacher and running inside, Kenny finds her and the sheriff in the basement and frees them. Meanwhile, the teacher with an axe breaks the door and, breaking in, attacks the captives. Brent sacrifices himself and allows the teenagers to escape. Having plunged an axe into the sheriff and his father, Leonardo takes his life. Schoolchildren run to the party and tell the policemen about what happened, but the criminal catches up with them and takes the life of the officer. The couple tries to hide in the house, but panic sets in here. Leonardo injures everyone who stands in his way and pursues Jody. At some point, Kenny tries to stop this, but gets hurt. Face to face with the man again, Jody remembers the tricks her father taught her and pushes Leonardo off the balcony. The girl's crazy brother falls onto a broken railing that has pierced his body. At some point, Leonardo tries to grab one of the students, but the deputy sheriff puts two clips into him. A couple of days later, FBI agents interrogate Jody and her mother but they can't help the investigation and leave. On the street, the girl sees a Leonardo for a moment, but he immediately disappears.